Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's talk about my plans for Winterfield Day. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So every year since I got my amateur radio license, I have always tried to present myself with a challenge for field day. And for the last several years, I've been working to reduce my pack size and kind of all the gear that I carried, shrink that down to a bare minimum while still being able to be self-sufficient and have all of the power in batteries and solar panels that I needed to do a 24 hour activation like Phil Day. Now, many of you may know that my wife and I purchased an RV last year and I had the opportunity to take that out on several different radio activations, mostly parks on the air. But this has got me to thinking and thinking about the challenge for Winter Phil Day this year. And I've decided that if I incorporate the RV into my field day plans, it's going to open up a tremendous amount of opportunities for us and present some new challenges along the way. Now, I still won't be using uh, commercial power or internet inside the RV for field day and is pretty much going to get rid of the weight and power restrictions that I've had to deal with in the past. Now, don't worry, we'll still be using the Raspberry Pi to run everything inside the RV, but it's just going to allow us to offer some things that uh, I haven't been able to offer in the past, and it's going to allow us to run multiple radios from within the RV. So one of the things that I want to do, in addition to running my primary station, I want to add a few extra items, services, uh, whatnots, that will help other operators out. One of those things is going to be an APRS Digipeter. This will allow anyone at the Winter Field Day site that is walking around with an APRS capable HT to easily get into my Digipeter. Again, no internet connected, but if I can get an antenna up at about 30 feet or so for the APRS Digi, it should be able to Digipeat their signal to the wide area digi in our area, making it uh, super easy for them to get that APRS signal from their HT into the wide area digi that they probably wouldn't be able to get into otherwise. Now, in addition to that, I have been working on a new server. And the idea behind the server is to provide a few extra features and services that those at the field day site may find beneficial. Now, some of you may be familiar with my emergency email server that I wrote several years ago. Well, we're going to take that concept and expand upon it. Uh, and this kind of came about uh, with some challenges that a couple of patrons put out to me. So, the first thing I added to the emergency email server was a WordPress blog. The blog will give us an easy place where we can pose, uh, post news updates and information that could easily be disseminated over a small area site. I also have a PHP BB forum that is running along with both of the other services that I mentioned just a couple of seconds ago. So it will be a full-blown forum, but again, disconnected from the internet and hosted locally on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, but you could get the same interaction that you would on a regular internet forum. It'll just be contained locally. On that same server, I am also running a file server and I'm trying to gather up as much data as I can and put on the file server. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire list here, but just some of the things that I have already thought to include on the file server are things like uh, the ICS forms that you might need. Uh, I've also got some ARIES documents and ARIES manuals. I've got some WinLink uh, cheat sheets that are available out there. 
and I've tried to go ahead and download quite a few different radio manuals for most of the popular ham radios out there so that if a radio operator needed to reference a manual but didn't already have one available, he could quickly download that from the file server. Now, I've also included two other things on this new server. Uh, I've got an internal mail server running on this Raspberry Pi where you can create a free account and pass traffic or email messages back and forth over this server. Uh, it won't be able to connect again to the internet, so it'll only be those who have created an account on this server that I'm building for Winter Field Day. And finally, the last thing I have installed on it is MeshChat. Uh, MeshChat is kind of just a chat bulletin board, if you will. It's really designed to run over Arden Mesh Networks, or Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network, but I wanted to see if I could isolate that to just run on the Raspberry Pi without any connection to the mesh, and I was able to get that up and running. No uh, login is required. Well, let me, let me rephrase that. You don't have to create an account. You just simply log in with your call sign, and you're able to post uh, messages right there using MeshChat. Now, the one thing I haven't uh, quite got sorted out and decided on is how I'm going to distribute the network so that others can connect on field day or winter field day. There's a couple of possibilities that I may use. I may end up using a Arden mesh uh, node so that uh, others could connect over the mesh. That'll all depend on how many uh, end users will be deploying mesh nodes at fill day. The other option I have is with the RV, I've got a built-in uh, Wi-Fi network here with the antennas already mounted on the roof. So that should allow anyone to connect to my RV at the fill day site. Uh, so that would distribute the Wi-Fi signal out a pretty good distance since that antenna is up on the roof. And that's another option for networking that I have available. Now, beyond field day, this server could also be used maybe by other emergency groups like an Aries group or a Racy's group. Um, kind of still sorting all of that out, and I'll be interested once I do put some of the information out on how I built this server, I'll be interested to see what you guys come up with and how you think it might be useful. And I have already uh, pretty much gotten an install script written for this. After I've had time to kind of field test everything and make sure that everything is working as it should, I'll be releasing that. It may take it a, another two or three months before that uh, is finalized and I'm able to get that out. Uh, it's not going to be as easy as build a pie. Uh, you're pretty much going to be becoming your own uh, system administrator when you start deploying all the services. There's just no way possible that I can get everything configured for you the way I do with Buildapi. But we'll kind of walk through some videos if everything works out uh, with the testing. We'll walk through some videos and show you guys how you can configure something very similar, if not identical, on your own Raspberry Pi. So incorporating the RV into my field day challenge for this year opens up a lot of possibilities. And I'm sure there's other services that we can add to this setup. If you've got an idea of what you think might be useful, leave it down in the comments below because I'm going to be kind of searching through that and doing some research on my own to see how we can push this a step further once summer fill day rolls around. If you found this information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.